Hello! So today I'm going to be reviewing Anthem by Noah Hawley, released in 2022. Now I have never read anything by Noah Hawley before, but upon doing some research before reading this, I realised that he was the show creator and show writer for two shows that I really loved. Uh, the first one being the absolutely spectacular award winning Fargo, and the other being a very weird but wonderful show called Legion. So I was quite excited to dive into this. This book explores themes around social media, the big pharma opioid epidemic, climate change, politics and racism. The book actually gave me massive Chuck Palahniuk vibes, uh, the author of Fight Club, Survivor, Diary, Lullaby. I mean, I just absolutely loved all of Chuck Palahniuk's early work. Although I haven't really enjoyed anything Chuck Palahniuk has done for the past two years. In fact, yeah, quite disliked a lot of that stuff, actually. I'm sorry, Chuck, but your early work... Mwah. There's something about what Chuck Falinuk and Noah Hawley is doing in this book that kind of threads the idiosyncratic details of American life. It makes it feel almost fantastical, but in essence, that is America. When you're born into this world, you're born into a freak show, but when you're born in America, you're on the front row. Love that. Noah Hawley mentions in this book that the reason he wrote it was because of the conversations he was having with his young teen daughter. She was suffering with a lot of anxiety about the world adults were leaving her behind for her to inhabit, and it's through those conversations that this book was born. There are chapters and interludes in this book from Noah Hawley himself, which he describes the current state of America and almost how that's affecting the characters he is writing. Noah Hawley states at the start that this is a book about maths, and actually we get a lot of facts, statistics, figures thrown at us as a reader, but what that does is it really gives weight to the issues being explored. When you look at those stats, when you look at those figures, which are quite jaw-dropping, yeah, it really adds to the overall impact of what Noah Hawley is trying to achieve. So what's it about? Set in the near future, and I mean the very near future, and some could say a dystopian future, however, Everything feels a little too real, a little too current to fall directly into that dystopian future category. So within this near future, we are very much in the age of anxiety. As the book highlights, teenagers have grown up with this fear, a fear that the adults have passed down onto them. They have grown up in a constant state of fear from everything around them, from media, from the world, from terrorism, everything has induced this fear into the population. And that fear has been passed down to the young. And that fear has swollen and grown in teenagers into this absolute bursting form of anxiety. And the result is a pandemic of mass suicide. Uh, teens across America are taking their lives in very, very high numbers. The novel very much wears its politics on its sleeve, and I think if you even slightly disagree with those politics, then you're probably not gonna get on with this one. However, I agreed the fuck out of it, so it already had one up for me. The events in this book very much lead on or are a hangover or byproduct of current events in America. The the Oxycontin epidemic, the storming of the capital, COVID, all these things have sort of affected how our characters and the journey they go on plays out. There is almost a fantasy feel to this novel at times. In, in essence, our main narrative is three characters going on a sort of quest that you could almost call like a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. We have characters that are called things like the Ogres or the God King or the Wizard. And although it names no names, I think it's pretty obvious what these titles apply to. We have the God King, which is very much Donald Trump, and we have this kind of wizard lord, which is Jeffrey Epstein. We start the main narrative arc of this novel at the Float Anxiety Center in a suburb of Chicago. Simon Oliver, a 15 year old, is there trying to recover from the tragic passing of his sister. His sister in the novel is believed to be one of the first girls to take her own life, which started the pandemic of suicides across America. Simon Oliver is also from one of the wealthiest families in America, his dad working in pharmaceuticals and earning billions. Simon breaks out of the treatment center with a girl called Louise, who suffers with OCD, and a guy called the Prophet, who has been contacted by God to try and save the world. Following guidance from the prophet, the trio set out on a quest to save a woman who is being held captive by a man called the Wizard. And Louise has her own experiences and tragedies in the presence of the Wizard. And as the trio travel across America to get to Texas, they meet an ever-growing cast of characters. And there is a lot of characters in this book, I mean a lot of characters, each with their own backstories and each with their own political views on the world that are guiding their actions through this novel. Too many characters to mention really, but as the novel progresses, all of these characters seem to crisscross, their narratives and their arcs seem to sort of overlap and they meet each other, sometimes in really predictable ways, but in others, ways that kind of genuinely surprised me. The novel builds to all-out war across America 
riots, the country is just collapsing, and the trio must just continue on their quest, trying to survive everything they encounter. So, what did I like? What didn't I like? What I liked. I love the overall style and tone of this one, both satirical, but also fantastical and utterly surreal. I really like the writing style, which is pretty straightforward, but it has dialogue that could almost sit directly into a screenplay, but it really worked for the tone of the book. I liked all of the main characters in this book, who were all pretty well-rounded, some a little bit more than others, but overall, I was never at doubt for why they were doing what they were doing and why they were trying to achieve what they were trying to achieve. I also really loved the stats and figures that were thrown at us as a reader, as they start to mount, your jaw kind of drops. But I really love that because you're looking at them going, that's an absurd number, just an absurd number. But when you realize, oh, that number's probably true, it's quite horrifying. I also like that it's really nicely postmodern and quite self-referential, but it never pushes that idea too far. However, I can see the interludes from the author in this book disrupting people's flow of the main narrative, sort of taking you out of the story I really liked it for that, but for some people that just might not be your cup of tea. What didn't I like? Only really one thing. The story and the crisscrossing narrative that's taking place didn't really bring anything new to the table. The framework that Noah Hawley has picked to put his interesting but very bleak insights into America yet yeah, just felt a little simple. It's dense with characters and the layering is extremely well handled, but yeah, when you really cut down to the basics of this book, its main narrative, yeah, it's just very, very simple. Which is a shame because when I started this book and I was about a quarter of the way through, I thought it was going to give me something a little bit more. So there you go, that is my ramblings on Anthem by Noah Hawley. Uh, I really, really like this one. I can see it not being everybody's cup of tea. However, I am going to give it four stars out of five. I thought it was excellent. And just as a side note, this is a fairly bleak novel, a very bleak look at the state of America right now and what could be in its future. I do understand that some people might find that bleakness too much to handle. Because it's a bit satirical, I was able to find the kind of light, the humour within that. But that is not to say that this novel isn't without hope. Noah Hawley, now I don't think this is a spoiler, not a, definitely not to the plot or the main narrative taking place, but Noah Hawley at the end mentions this little moment of recognising the people who have helped us. A way of actually helping ourselves and helping our anxiety is realising the people in our lives who are there to support us. And he suggests to the reader that you go away and you write down the names of every single person who has helped you in even the slightest way in your life. A form of cathartic meditation on all the people that have been there for you and tried to help you. I actually went away and did this and I found it a very rewarding process and also I was quite happy to be like, this list is very, very long. Uh, yeah, so I don't know, there was a kind of hope in the action of doing it at the end. I don't know, I just like that. It just felt quite hopeful at the end it, by making the reader do that one final little thing. So, have you read this book? If so, what did you think about it? Did you love it or did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye.